Fat Shark just launched two brand new weapons into Darktide, one for the Zealot and one for the Ogryn. Chances are you've seen them, maybe you've even given them a whirl, but I'm here to put it all into perspective. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, we're breaking down the Indignatic Crusher and the Achilles Power Maul. I've been toying with the idea of talking about these weapons since they were first teased, but because of some pretty terrible RNG, it took us a couple days to even come across these weapons. That's a story for another day. The long and short of it is both weapons function very much the same. In fact, I think most casual players will say they're identical. What I'm talking about, of course, is the Indignatic Crusher, which is the brand new Zealot weapon, and the Achilles Power Maul, which is a brand new Ogryn weapon. Both are interesting, but are they any good? And most importantly, are they fun to use? That's what I really want to focus on today, when and how these weapons work best so you can get the most whenever you decide to pick one up. First, I want to talk about the brand new Zealot weapon, the Indignatus Mark IV-E Crusher. This is a two-handed mace style weapon. As such, it's much slower to swing about with both the light and heavy attacks being noticeably slower than most weapons in the game. That being said, I still found it manageable for the Zealot. Because the Crusher has a wide arc, it's actually a decent weapon for dealing damage to multiple enemies, as well as keeping control over an area. Of course, your experience is all going to depend on how good the stats are on the Crusher that you're using, but its base functionality doesn't change because of the stats. What I especially enjoy about the Crusher, and this is personal taste, is the first attack of the Heavy Combo. It's a direct chopping blow that brings the mace straight down on a target. While that basically reduces its AoE effectiveness to zero, it's a great way to deal critical hits to most enemies whose weak spots are on their head. As you can see, the Crusher's light attack features a four attack sequence, with three attacks being more along the horizontal plane, and one attack, the second in the sequence, being more along the vertical plane. Now I'm burying the lead a bit, because the real magic with this weapon is its special attack. The Indignatus Mark IV-E Crusher is a power weapon, which means when toggled, you can imbue your weapon with a crackling blue energy that you can then unleash to devastating effects. Toggling the power effect on your weapon is as simple as hitting a single button, at which point your next attack will deliver a much more deadly blow. The first target you impact with the attack will take the brunt of the damage, but other enemies in the area will be staggered, which is fantastic when you talk about the weapon's utility. In a more practical sense, this is one of the most effective ways to lock down a massive armored target like a bulwark or a crusher. A little power crusher to the face and you can keep them perma-staggered, setting your team up for an easy kill. There is definitely a feel to using the Crusher. Mace weapons have a different playstyle than swords or axes in the game, and it does take a bit of getting used to, but having access to an on-demand power attack is really what sells me on this weapon. It's comparable to the Thunder Hammer in a lot of ways, but one thing that really stands out is the attack pattern of the Crusher. If you compare the two side by side, you'll notice that the Crusher is much more suited for mob control. Horizontal attacks means enemies can be hit with sweeping blows, whereas the Thunder Hammer's light attacks are all chopping in nature, which is much more suited for single target critical hits. If you're curious what the various weapon stats means on the Crusher, let me quickly break it all down. Damage is the overall damage output. Crowd control indicates how much stagger your attacks have. Penetration informs the damage you do to armored enemies. Defense determines how much stamina is used when blocking. And power output is tied to bonus damage you deal when utilizing the weapon's special attack. All in all, I really enjoy this weapon. I think Zealots will find it to be much slower than they're used to and probably like, but it's a really fun crowd control weapon, and that's not a bad thing to utilize in a group setting, especially if you need a little extra stagger and the ability to lock down elites or other high priority targets. I wouldn't say the Crusher is the best at outright killing enemies, but it is definitely capable of taking a few enemies off the board. I would say its playstyle fits much better in a team situation where it's going to be more valuable keeping enemies off other players and overall controlling wide zones in any given encounter space. If that's your vibe, you're going to find immense joy using this weapon, activating its special ability and blasting enemies into pieces. The other new weapon added into the game is the Achilles Mark I Power Maul. I'm not going to lie, this is very similar to the Crusher we just talked about, but in the spirit of fairness, let's break it down nonetheless. By Ogren standards, this is a one-handed mace-style weapon. It's a big, beefy power weapon that's capable of dealing a ton of single-target damage, and it becomes even more potent when activating the weapon's special ability. Exactly like the Crusher, the Power Maul is a power weapon, so when activated, it'll crackle with blue energy, which gives you a brief window of a few seconds to unleash a powerful attack. This functions the exact same way as the Crusher. The first target the weapon impacts receives the majority of the damage, but enemies in the area directly surrounding the impact 
are staggered, sometimes also taking a bit of damage. Where the two weapons drastically differ are their attack patterns. The Power Maul's light attack sequence is built around four independent movements, two chops and two slashes. The really interesting thing here is that the chops are the first two in the sequence. The Ogren will bring them all straight down and then straight up. The final two attacks are more diagonal slashes which can hit multiple targets. What I'm driving to here is that inherently the Power Maul has less outright AoE capabilities than the Crusher, just because of the sequence of attacks, but that doesn't mean it's bad, just different. Because of the Ogren's height, that first attack, which comes straight down, will almost always come square on an enemy's head for a weak point hit. The Power Maul does have the ability to hit multiple enemies with its heavy attack combination, which is a simple two movement sequence, but as you might expect, it's a slow, laborious process. Ogryn weapons are already slow with their attacks, and the mace is among the slowest in the game when it comes to swing time. Stat-wise, the weapon has the same properties as the Crusher, so everything we talked about before still applies. The better the stats, the more you'll be able to utilize the weapon for what it's intended for, dealing with armored targets. Add in the Power Maul special effect, and once again, you've got yourself a single target stagger and killing machine. In terms of playstyle, this weapon is a bit harder to place, at least in my opinion. It doesn't have the same built-in CC potential that the Crusher does, and that largely comes down to the attack pattern being different. However, I still find it to be a solid weapon when dealing with armored enemies like Maulers, Ragers, Crushers, and Bulwarks. The power effect is just as potent as the Crushers, and it's still perfectly capable of dealing AoE damage. You just have to understand the weapon's unique attack pattern. I think it's safe to say that both weapons, the Crusher and the Power Maul, are going to be received differently by the classes wielding them. I don't know how many zealots are looking for a slower CC style weapon, but if there are those of you out there, you found a great item in the Crusher. It's definitely a leap in a different direction than most of the zealots' current offerings in the game, which I think is going to be a love it or leave it type of situation. I would imagine most zealots are going to find it a bit too slow and cumbersome, but I could be wrong. On the other hand, I think the Power Maul is going to be much easier for Ogrins to latch onto. They're already used to slow weapon attacks, and the added benefit of the Power Maul being a power weapon just makes it that much more appealing for those frontline Ogrins that want to get out from behind the shield. I can't say I personally found the weapon that fun to use, but it largely boils down to that attack pattern, which I just didn't enjoy. That being said, I'm sure the right player will find it a ton of fun. Look guys, new weapons are exciting, they're fun to mess around with, and even more fun to talk about and to showcase. So if you like this kind of content and you want us to dive into more new weapon videos, all you need to do is hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. We've still got plenty of Dark Tide content planned, and we'd love to have you along for the ride. I also invite you to join the Legacy Gaming Discord. We just revamped our entire server and is a home to nearly 20,000 members. It's a great place to hang out, talk about games, win free stuff, and group up. You name it, we've got it. As always, I'll leave that link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.